Prince thought objectively speaking. He already knew that this maid was beautiful. When they first met, she wasn't this beautiful, but just by changing her clothes and wearing makeup. It's hard to take his eyes off her now. When did this maid start to feel special to him? Rosetta asked his majesty if he was feeling unwell by any chance. Prince replied, don't worry about it, she can hold on. Rosetta thought that being escorted by his highness was embarrassing. She couldn't seem to find her composure. Prince wondered if she was nervous because it was a real date. In the carriage, Rosetta asked where they were going. Prince replied that they were going to La Tranche's shop for her clothes. Rosetta thought if it's La Tranche's, it's no doubt the most popular fashion boutique in the empire at the moment. A place frequented by high-ranking nobles, that's the extent of her knowledge when it comes to clothes. Rosetta said there is no need for something so expensive. She's sure the reservations are fully booked as well. Prince replied that she sometimes seems to forget who he is. In the next scene, Lydia, the owner of the shop, introduced herself. Prince told her he came to have his maid's clothes fitted. Lydia thought, a maid, can she even afford it? Prince stated, don't worry about the price, just choose around 10 outfits that she likes. Rosetta said that's too many. Prince replied that he would be waiting there, so go ahead. After some time, Rosetta wondered why His Highness was so whimsical. The trend at this time certainly was overly glamorous. However, as the trend shifted toward more natural and understated dresses, this shop would be overshadowed. Rosetta stated she will take this one. Lydia told her she doesn't have to rush in making a decision. Rosetta replied, It's not like that, the truth is, she is not interested in clothes. Lydia thought how arrogant, if she tried to send her away indirectly, she would quickly understand and leave on her own. In the next scene, Lydia stated, Customer, there seems to have been a misunderstanding. That dress was requested by someone else before her, she will take it back. Rosetta thought she is telling her this while she is in the middle of changing clothes. Now she gets it. This shop is a place admired by noblewomen. They can't accept a maid of unknown origin. Seems Lydia doesn't have the confidence to say that to the crown prince directly. She is resorting to insulting her like this. How shameless. Rosetta stated, So it seems in this shop, the customer takes responsibility for the mistakes made by the staff. Even if they come here to buy clothes, they still have to go through such hardship. The other noble ladies must be having a hard time. Lydia said she understands that the young lady feels disappointed for not getting what she wanted, but she should refrain from rude remarks. She may not know where the young lady came from, but still, she should maintain the same proper etiquette as a noble. Rosetta stated Lydia is right. That dress wasn't really to her taste anyway. However, it would be appropriate for Lydia to apologize for barging in without permission and seeking her understanding regarding both the incident of abruptly opening the curtain, the mistake made by the boutique, that's how nobles would act. The other lady came and stated, was it she, the one who converted her dress? This is meant for royal parties. It's not meant to be worn to wash clothes. Then she slapped her, saying, Live according to her status, she should know her place if she is wearing such shabby and cheap clothes. Rosetta thought she supposed she will have to teach her a lesson. Prince came and stated, Rosetta is a worthless life, that's what she said. How dare she mutter such words to his companion, both of them were shocked. The lady replied, Your Majesty, this place is meant for women, Rosetta also said, please calm down, she is fine. Prince asked, is all she can do to say she is fine? After hearing such nonsense, are those the only words she utters, even if she is fine, she is not fine at all. Rosetta replied, Your Majesty, let's go somewhere else, she knows a better boutique, she thought if this continues, it will only cause trouble, and rumors will spread. Prince stated, if she insist, however, today's events will be remembered. In the next scene, Rosetta thought about tailor-made dresses. It wouldn't mean much with His Highness's wealth, but she is just a lowly maid. Is he being kind to her because he feels sorry for her? Perhaps if she were to clarify that she is not going to die, maybe he would be happy. Rosetta apologized. He must have been concerned because of her. Prince replied, he can't bear to listen to her any further. 
Why is she apologizing for something that wasn't even her fault? Why is she apologizing when he is the one worrying about her? She is not someone who deserves to receive such treatment from anyone's to apologize after making him angry. She is too kind and nice. Rosetta replied, She is not really that kind, Prince asked. Then why would someone like her worry about him before themselves M? Rosetta replied, Because he is her lord, she only act this way towards him. At that moment, Prince felt that even the readers witnessing this scene would know M. The statement that was just made was undoubtedly a love confession M. However, Rosetta was unaware of this fact. Prince thought he had prepared himself mentally, but to suddenly confess like this, then he thought in the past her mother also died. But to give his heart to someone who is about to die, can one muster such courage? Rosetta stated what just happened in La Tranchism. She has no intention of just letting it gom, she only needs a little help from him. After some time, she said, It's here, Prince asked, How can revenge be taken with the help of such a small clothing store? Rosetta replied, Do he know why the noble women fought so fiercely over dresses? It's because of the upcoming imperial banquet to be held in two weeks. It's the last chance to find a partner before the hunting festival so she will buy the most beautiful and exquisite dress from here. Then she can present it to a lady who will attend the royal ball with him if possible. A blue dress would be even better. The shop owner lady asked, Are they customers M? Prince replied, Yes. He would like to order a dress M. The lady asked, Do they know the size of the person who will wear that dress? Prince spoke, Isn't that obvious? Rosetta thought that even in her past life, Prince attended the banquet with Luniella, although she is worried about the impact of her wearing a blue dress on the future, since his partner hasn't changed, she doesn't have to worry about it. Prince stated, Is there anyone she is considering fitting it to, then fitted it to her body? Rosetta was shocked, then thought she supposed His Highness doesn't know women's clothing sizes. First, they will have the dress fitted using her and then make alterations later if needed. Rosetta requested to make it a bit loose so he can make alterations later. Prince thought about alterations and realized that the maid still seems to be growing a bit taller, is it because of that? After some time, Rosetta stated that she really enjoyed herself today, it will remain with her as one of her precious memories. For the remaining time, she also wants to repay him, is that okay, he only needs to spare an hour or two, well then, undress, your highness, Prince thought, what? Rosetta said she will bring him what he needs to wear. So don't be so fussy and undress, Prince thought even if it's like that, to make him undress right here in the carriage, could it be that she has such preferences? Then after some time, Rosetta came and told him to change into these commoners' clothes and let's go, Prince asked, then what about? Rosetta replied, today is the day the night market opens, there may be a lot of thugs and pickpockets, but the skewers there are exceptional. In the next scene, Girls are staring at Prince. Then Prince asked why everyone is staring at him. Rosetta replied, Blonde hair and blue eyes are not the only things that make a man handsome. So cover his face with the robe, so his face is less visible. Then she said, Here we go. Prince said it's delicious, and then asked why she's not eating. Rosetta replied that she is fine. Prince said from now on, Whenever she says she is fine, he will do this. Rosetta thought she didn't expect him to be able to make such jokes. After that Prince stated it's getting cold. Let's go inside. Rosetta replied that when it gets darker, there will be fireworks. Prince said then he will go get a coat for her, so wait here. After Prince left, two idiots came. One of them asked if she is alone and if she would like to watch the fireworks with them. Rosetta replied that she is here with her companion. The man said not to say that. He will give her a good deal, and the cost will be everything she has right now. Rosetta thought she hoped for a day without any trouble, but it's fortunate that they came when His Highness wasn't here. Then she spoke that even if he receives money, it seems like it won't be enough. She has to take care of everything before her sunfish arrives, so let's hurry up. The other one stated he will definitely get his ransom. Rosetta thought as expected after Troublemaker, there are too many openings. Meanwhile, Prince thought he doesn't even know the way properly, and yet he said he would confidently go and come back. Then Prince was shocked and asked, What on earth is this? 
What happened? Is she hurt? Rosetta replied. Well, a certain gentleman rescued her. He was a wonderful person like a knight, with his blonde hair and blue eyes, Prince spoke. Anyway, he is glad she is not hurt. After that, Prince thought. So a knight with blonde hair and blue eyes suddenly appeared and rescued her. He sounds familiar, like someone he know. The way she is describing him, could it be the friend she claimed works at the palace last time? Because he didn't like her friend, is Rosetta aware of this and hiding it from him? No, that's ridiculous, what nonsense he is thinking. Rosetta stated, Your Highness, look over there, the fireworks display is so grand, isn't it beautiful? Prince replied, Yes, it's beautiful. In the next scene, Rosetta thought his illness flaring up, is it because of what happened during the day? Thankfully, she prepared for this kind of situation. 101 Ways to Train a Disobedient Cat Rosetta stated, No, your highness, then thought first she should firmly discourage any improper behavior, so is this working, or maybe does he retain his memories during the state of madness? Second, provide appropriate rewards for smooth training. Here's delicious beef jerky, but there was no reaction. Then she thought so cat treats won't do, come to think of it, she still doesn't know what his highness likes. Then third, stroke and pet their favorite areas, and get them used to being touched, so favorite areas, when she pets her cat, he seemed to like it, she touching his highness's rear parts, she must be crazy. Then she asked his highness if he trusts her, she won't hurt him, let's start with the head for now, and next to the chest, should she move downward. Prince grabbed her hand. Rosetta stated, Wow, he's being good. He likes being petted. Prince replied, No. Rosetta was shocked and thought he just spoke. Then Prince stated he likes this better. Rosetta spoke, Your Highness, wait a moment. Then she pushed him. She thought, Why did he kiss her all of a sudden? She thought he regained his senses because he could communicate. Then she asked, Do he recognize her? Prince replied, Rose, Rosetta thought, why this sudden nickname, could it be that thanks to the training, his rationality is returning? Then she asked, is he back to his senses, Rosetta thought she guessed not, she spoke, kissing someone suddenly is an extremely impolite behavior, please refrain from doing it in the future, understood. Prince replied, he don't want to, he want more, Rosetta said, let's stop here for today, please rest now. Prince replied, no, give him more. Rosetta spoke, your highness, he is good, right, just lie down on the bed obediently, she thought, just by looking at his expression, it's clear he is not even considering listening. She is just trying it out as an experiment, just as an experiment, your highness, if he come over here and lie down, he will give her a kiss, Prince replied, okay, let him kiss her once. Rosetta thought she didn't think it would actually work, a knight cannot speak both ways with one mouth. Let's just consider it as a peck on the lips, then she stated, that's enough. Now that she have done as he wished, please rest, Prince grabbed her hand, and threw her onto the bed, then started kissing her. Rosetta stated, stop, please stop now, then she thought he was so surprised that he fainted, she guessed sleeping is out of the question. The next morning, Prince asked, last night, did he change again? He apologized. Rosetta replied, there is no need to apologize. He wa actually better yesterday, he even spoke. Prince asked, he said something. What did he say? Rosetta replied, he said he liked it. Prince asked, what liked it? Rosetta thought she can't say he liked kissing her. Then she replied, he said he liked her. Prince thought, no way. Did he confess to her? Rosetta spoke. There wasn't much else besides that. She would rather request for medical attention. Is His Majesty all right? Prince thought, no. However, seeing her in distress, he supposes she didn't accept his confession last night. Prince replied, he is fine. Forget about it, so just go rest. After that, Prince thought, that's better. It's better to reject his confession. Loving someone who doesn't have much longer to live. Then he thought in his mind, a lady said he should understand this well with his intelligence. How terrible the pain of losing someone is, how empty a longing that can never be fulfilled is. She remembered this with his clever mind, 
he won't dream any futile dreams anymore. The next morning, priest check her condition, Rosetta thought, well, after that they talked about last night, she is sure his highness is quite shocked. By the way, his majesty's health seems to be getting worse, perhaps she should arrange for Father Theodore to become his personal physician. The priest stated, all of the sitar has been decrypted, this is amazing, it's so amazing it should be published in a book, hey can't wait to tell his highness. Rosetta replied, no, let her tell him first, calm down, his majesty thinks highly of his skills, he asked her to convey his regards to him, he said Theodore might be able to figure something out. The priest stated, what, is she sure, come to think of it, there is one thing that bothers him, but for the better, she has an unusually wide mana circuit near her heart, maybe that's what's affecting her. Rosetta thought he is sharp, he is really good at this, she has been feeling it lately, the swordmaster awakening in this life. In the next scene, Rosetta asked his majesty if he's feeling well, Prince replied, yes, Rosetta said, is he still not feeling well, he seems a little unapproachable today. Prince asked, what's going on? He thought he told her to rest for the day. Rosetta replied, Well, not much. She is hoping to get a vacation this weekend, Prince thought. Come to think of it, she mentioned meeting a friend during the last holiday with a male friend. Then asked, With that friend she told him about, Rosetta replied, That's right. How did he know? She is going to his house to have fun. Please continue to wear the gift she gave him even when she is not around. Prince promised, After Rosetta left, Prince thought, what did she just say? Does that mean she still has feelings for him? Poor thing. She has not given up hope that she can survive. Then at the weekend, Rosetta stated, Valerian, she has come. Valerian stated, good morning. She is still as beautiful as ever today. Rosetta replied, what the hell is he doing? He even made a portal in his house inside the palace. Valerian replied, however, it's very pretty. He is pleased, Rosetta asked, how is the poison detection tool coming along? Valerian said he's still experimenting with it, but it should be ready in a few days. Rosetta asked, but she was wondering, can he tell if it's a curse? Valerian asked, why, is the crown prince cursed? Rosetta replied, it's just a hunch, but she thinks someone has put a curse on him. Then she thought it would be easier to say, that his highness has been struck by madness, but she can't honestly reveal his majesty's fatal secret. Valerian said, first, they must find the medium of the curse, there must be one, if it's a powerful curse, it could be very old. Then he said, we are here to relax, let's not talk about work, in the next moment, Valerian said, nothing beats the sea to clear our minds. Rosetta replied, there is really nothing he can't do with magic, Valerian started, she have to reward him, there is no kindness without a price. Rosetta kissed him, then asked, is that enough? Suddenly, magic shattered, in the next scene, Rosetta stated, that's good, she can dry my body her magic. Valerian replied, he could do it every day, Rosetta said, she don't want to be taken care of by a child whose magic was disturbed by a kiss, Valerian shouted, that was a mistake. After some time, Rosetta stated, tomorrow, she is going to tell his majesty that she is not going to die, honestly, she is worried, but his majesty has been pretty good to her lately, so is sure he will be fine. Valerian got on he, r and stated, when she is with him, focus on him. Valerian stated, back in time, maids are getting all the things saying that if there is anything to take, take it all, this family is ruined so they can't even give them a salary anyway. On rainy days, his mood always hits rock bottom because he lost everything in that heavy rain. The world was not that kind to a helpless child who could not do anything. While losing all hope and dying, he met her, he felt better during rainy days, she is the benefactor who pulled him out of the gutter. He swore when the countess passed away, she will forever be the sibling he must protect, all he wants is her happiness. Rosetta stated, easy, try not to play a trick on her again, Valerian replied, let's hold hands and sleep, it's been a while, Rosetta replied, okay. In the next scene, Prince thought he couldn't sleep well because he was worried, she must have had a good time with her friend, when is he coming back, 
The next moment, Rosetta asked, Can she come in? Your Highness, Prince replied, Yes. Rosetta thought he is not even looking at her, is he in a bad mood again? Let's say something, Rosetta stated. Good morning, Prince asked, is this a dress he haven't seen before? Rosetta replied, this dress her friend gave her, it's a new outfit, Prince said, her face looks good, she must have rested well, why don't she keep resting for the rest of the day, don't push herself too hard. Rosetta thought, what, he hasn't even talked about anything important yet, he's kicking her out, she can't do that, Rosetta stated, she have something to tell him, she is not going to die. The priest has diagnosed me with certainty, he said she is not going to die, she will be with him forever, he appointed her as his personal maid until death. Rosetta thought, why is he not saying anything, she doesn't know, let's just run away like she planned, Prince stated, wait, seriously, is she sure she is not going to die and will stay by his side, she won't leave. He is so glad that she won't die, he is relieved, he feels the same way as she, but she knows his situation isn't very stable either. Rosetta thought, what does he mean by wait? What does he mean by feeling the same as she? Can he really recognize her loyalty? That's why he is fighting for the throne. Then she said, yes, she will wait for him forever. Prince hugged her, Rosetta thought. Isn't this physical affection due to being overly moved a bit excessive? No, it's okay if a person gets too emotional. The next day, Rosetta stated, Your Highness, it's time to eat, Prince replied. Take a seat, Rosetta said. Wouldn't it be better if she ate separately? Prince told her, Don't be silly, give it a try. Then she thought, Don't do this, Your Majesty. So after that, three things have changed. First, His Majesty began to take an active interest in political affairs. Second, the priest became His Majesty's exclusive priest. Third, he treats Rosetta affectionately like a lover. Prince stated, then she should feed him too, Rosetta thought, can't he feed himself, she doesn't know, let's just finish this quickly. Prince said, as expected, it tastes better when she feed him. After that, Rosetta thought, why on earth is he acting like this, why does he smile when our eyes meet, no way, could it be that his majesty likes her, nonsense, maybe they are just getting closer like how Valerian and she are. Prince thought, it feels like Rosetta is avoiding him, is she expressing disappointment because he has been busy hiring priests, resuming his active duties? All of it is aimed at restraining the Empress and strengthening his position, he is doing this because he wants to be with Rosetta, but he can't even meet her, what should he do if she leaves him? No, especially at a time like this, he should take action, and at a time like this, he has to show Rosetta his cool side, in the next scene, Prince is doing his sword training. Rosetta thought, why did his majesty bring her to the training ground, surely he didn't find out that she used to be a knight. After the training, Prince said he should take a bath, Rosetta asked if she should prepare the bath for him, Prince replied that he won't force her to do that, Rosetta said then she will wait here. Prince said no. Continuing to reject kindness is also impolite, he would appreciate it if she could give him a massage, Rosetta thought, but that doesn't mean he has to take off his clothes here, this person must be crazy after all. Rosetta told him she will wait outside until he finishes changing, Prince stated there is no need for that. Rosetta thought, what, then she ran out of the room, saying she would go bring the things needed for the bath. Rosetta thought, that guy is so reckless with his mouth, why did she say she should be there while he takes a bath? No, she would not be able to protect him if he was not in the bathroom. After some time, Rosetta asked his majesty if he was ready, and if he would like to go into the bath, Prince replied that he would like a massage before that, then she started his massage. Rosetta thought she didn't know this because she had never seen his back, but his muscles were broad, how impressive, after the massage, Prince thought, that was almost dangerous. Then Prince was taking his bath, and Rosetta slipped, she thought she didn't check the floor properly, and she was onto the Prince. Rosetta apologized, and Prince replied, it's okay for a moment, Rosetta thought, he must be crazy, then she said, no, he can't, it seems like the madness has taken over again, 
no wonder he has been quiet lately. Prince said, she really don't listen, do she, Rosetta thought, this should do it, and then said she told him to stop, she made him faint again. After some time, Prince asked if he fell asleep, Rosetta replied, yes, he fell asleep as soon as he entered the bath, and the symptoms of his illness reappeared. Prince stated that the priest has been treating him every day recently, and there hasn't been an issue until now. Prince asked if he said anything this time, Rosetta replied, wait a minute, someone is coming. Valerian came and greeted the Royal Highness, Rosetta thought, why did he come here all of a sudden without saying anything to her, did he notice what just happened? Valerian stated there is a reason for his sudden visit, he has something to show him, it's a magical spoon that can detect poison, Rosetta thought, that's it, it's the item she requested before. Valerian continued, explaining that it can detect a number of poisons, among all magic items produced to date, and he won't find anything better even if he seeks out other mages. Prince stated it's an impressive item, but why is Valerian showing him this? What's his motive? Valerian replied. If he were to trade it for that red-haired maid, would he accept? Prince asked, what did he just say? Rosetta thought she feels like she wants to hit him right now. If she gives him a discreet signal, he will understand. Then she thought, is he out of his mind? Valerian said, well, the research lab is currently understaffed, if not this maid, then any other servant would suffice, Prince thought, is that really what he wants? Then he said if they needed support with personnel, he could get it without Valerian's involvement. Valerian replied he would prefer his input. Prince asked if that meant he is siding with him, he is certain the first prince would have promised more rewards for him. Valerian replied he has only one person he truly trusts, someone who is so precious that it cannot be expressed in words. That person supports his highness, so he decided to follow that sentiment. Prince stated he understands since he has someone like that too. All right, then he will have to make an effort to maintain that person's favor. After that, Valerian stated the next item is a crystal ball, a very special one. It's a tool that can detect the aura of curses. He is not very adept at purification magic, so the activation conditions are a bit demanding. First, it can only be used once, and it's made from rare materials. Second, it requires a vast amount of divine power to activate, Prince said if it's divine power, he's a suitable candidate for that. The next moment, the priest came, Valerian told him to place his hand here, explaining that the range for detecting curses is this room, when divine power is infused, the area where the curse is located will be displayed in red on the crystal ball. The priest placed his hand on the crystal ball, and red dots appeared, then suddenly the whole crystal ball turned red. Prince asked, what are the chances that the crystal ball is wrong? Valerian replied, none, since it's a one-time use item, its accuracy is certain. Rosetta thought to think the entire room was filled with curses, it's her mistake for not noticing this during her last few regressions. She did inspect His Highness's room, but it was at a much later time than now, which means either the curse's effects wore off over the years, or someone came in and erased the evidence. In other words, if there are curses among them, then someone is planting curses all over the room, and anyone would suspect that there is a spy, his highness must be aware. Prince thought, as soon as he rejoiced at the fortune of having Rosetta by his side, as if he doesn't deserve her, it feels like he is drowning. Rosetta stated, His Majesty, we can solve this, she promised to protect him, Priest also said, His Highness, he will sacrifice his life to help him, Valerian spoke, reaffirming what he said earlier about being on His Highness's side. Prince replied, All right, thank everyone, so shall we start by tearing down this room? The next day, Leblance came, expressing her outrage at such an act, they must find the culprit and punish them. She heard that they want to demolish the room, which she thought was a thoughtful decision. The most important thing is his safety. Rosetta thought, now that they know there might be a spy, Madame cannot be excluded from the list of suspects either. It was she who brought the poisonous flowers. Is she truly doing this out of concern for His Highness, or is she trying to destroy the evidence? LeBlanc said there is one more thing that worries her, it would be good to demolish the room. 
but shouldn't they find evidence first, it might be better to delay it for a while. Rosetta thought, did she guess wrong? After learning about the curse, Prince promptly moved to a temporary residence, but officially relocating proved to be a challenging task. The room Prince used had been used by generations of crown princes of the empire, making it close to a national treasure. When there was talk of demolishing this treasure, noble opposition arose, leading to the convening of a meeting. Prince stated, Everyone seems to have a lot to say. Shall we start the meeting? One of the nobles said he will speak first. Prince thought that man is Count Mortmar, the brother of the current empress, then he said, Speak up. The priest was in his bedroom for hours, but they couldn't detect any cursed energy, Prince replied that it seems like the priest lacks the ability to do so. First Prince spoke, insulting the temple is tantamount to disrespecting the state religion, the archbishop also checked but found nothing either. This implies that there might be an issue with the evidence claimed to be a curse detecting item, they don't even know where that item came from in the first place. It seems like his younger brother has fallen for a charlatan's item, he is just concerned that something might be troubling him. Suddenly, the empress came and said, First prince, haven't she always warned her to be cautious with his words, and she could not sit still when she heard that her son was unwell, it's only right for her to be concerned. Prince thought she had dressed up like she was going to a party, but getting excited over such words is something only a fool like Grahan would do. First Prince said there's been a rumor that the Crown Prince has lost his mind. Prince replied that anyone here would know that the Archbishop was conducting regular checkups up until recently. Insulting the Archbishop is akin to disrespecting the state religion, isn't that what he said? The Empress suggested that dismantling a room considered a national treasure must be quite shocking. If it brings even a little comfort, she would permit it on behalf of His Highness, and there is one more thing. She heard that he has developed a close relationship with a maid in the palace recently. As her mother, she is concerned that he has a mistress before marriage, being possessed by trivial objects such as a curse detection object, and being unable to explain its source, she understands it's because of that woman's alluring words. Prince thought he had expected that one day, the Empress would find out about his relationship with Rosetta, but how dare she insult her, then Prince said he can come in. Valerian came and said, a trivial object, that's disappointing to hear, Prince stated that the item he mentioned is the work of Valerian. One of the nobles asked, then does that mean there were cursed items in his bedroom? Then he asked the archbishop why he couldn't find any of those curses, but the archbishop didn't answer that question because he didn't know what to say. The noble duke stated, is he saying that the person who is supposed to serve his highness, the crown prince, didn't do his job properly? The archbishop was embarrassed. The meeting continued with several verification processes. As for the archbishop, neither the empress nor the first prince took his side. It was concluded that a representative would be sent to the Vatican to discuss the disposition of the archbishop. As for the room, instead of dismantling it, an agreement was reached to spend a considerable amount of time purifying the curses. Additionally, concerning the credibility of the crystal, Valerian publicly revealed the crystal's blueprints. In the next scene, Rosetta asked, Did the meeting go well? Prince replied, She worked hard, just stay like this for a moment. Valerian also came and then asked through his thought, What is her relationship with that man? Rosetta replied, What kind of relationship? They are just master and knight. Then she said, His Highness, there are other people present. Prince replied that he made a mistake and apologized if he made her uncomfortable. Rosetta said he must be tired, and asked if he would like to go back to his room. She mentioned that she would bring some tea that's good for fatigue, and informed the archmage that his majesty needed some rest, so it would be best if he left now. Valerian was shocked. In the next scene, Prince stated that it's a busy time, so they need to deal with things like this quickly. He mentioned the Imperial Ball and Hunting Festival that takes place in three days. Rosetta asked if Lady Luniella had received the dress yet. Prince asked what she was talking about, as he didn't send it to her, he explained that the dress was tailored to her body, so it's only natural that she wear it. He then asked if she would come with him to the ball. Rosetta thought why her, but she worried that if she refused now, the ball was only three days away, 
and his majesty had to attend without a partner, she thought about how much the grey guy would laugh at him. Rosetta mentioned that she is his maid and her family has a humble background, so she thinks it would be difficult to be his partner. Prince replied that her origin doesn't matter, as he had decided that she is the one he will devote his heart and body to, he clarified that he is different from his father, and has no intention of indulging in pathetic attempts at entertaining multiple women, just to satisfy his filthy desires, he stated that at the ball, he would make his formal declaration to her, so please come with him. After that, Rosetta thought about all of his strange behavior and the strange words he spoke, she thought that all of them were because he liked her. But she is his knight, the one who has witnessed his death several times. Even after growing closer to him, could she possibly bear all of this? No, she is just worrying unnecessarily, if he confesses, she can just refuse. Then she heard a sound, and wondered if he had something else to say. Prince got on her, and Rosetta stated, His Highness, if they keep this up, Prince replied that he wanted to and asked if she did too, right. Rosetta thought that since they had been receiving regular healing from the priest, the symptoms had rarely appeared. Did he get too trusting at the meeting today? What why did he suddenly stop? Prince asked why he was here. Then Prince said there is something he wants to ask her. Have she ever been attacked? Rosetta replied yes. Prince asked not with the intention to attack, but with a different motive. Rosetta replied yes, then spoke but it's okay. Even this time she was able to control him. Prince was on his knees and said he apologizes. Words simply are not enough to apologize to her. Rosetta asked why is he doing this suddenly? Please get up. Prince stated he did something terrible to her. Even though it was because of his illness, he never thought he would humiliate her like this. He apologizes. His illness isn't like that. They say that he turns into an animal in a fit of rage and he attacks people around him regardless of his will. He swears that he has never done what he did to her to anyone else. Rosetta asked then why her. Prince replied perhaps it might have been an unconscious reaction. Since it was her, Rosetta thought did his highness do those things because he wanted to kiss her? She can't believe it. Does he truly like her? Prince stated it will never happen again. He promises, if he attempts something crazy like that again, she should kick him right away hit him wildly, she can even knock his head off if she must. Rosetta thought no that won't be necessary, he will definitely die, Prince told her to do as he says, he doesn't want to kiss her while he is not in his right mind, Rosetta asked then if he were in his right mind. Prince asked does she really not know, then they were trying to kiss, Prince stated but now is not the right time, he apologized for ruining the night, rest well. After that, Rosetta thought his highness does like her, she has been so clueless, she feels like a fool. The next day, Valerian asked why did that idiot hug her, Rosetta replied she knows this might sound unbelievable, but it seems like his highness likes her, Valerian asked did the crown prince confess to her. Rosetta replied not exactly, then he asked so what about her, how does she feel, does she like the crown prince, Rosetta replied no, why would she like him? Valerian replied that's good, then asked is she planning to attend the banquet as a servant. Rosetta replied she is not going as a maid, she will be attending as his majesty's partner, Valerian spoke, is that so? Well then he guesses he should attend too, it's for the sake of her protection. After that, in the carriage, Rosetta thought Valerian is behaving differently. What's on his mind lately, he is reacting so cheeky. The next scene. Melanie stated they heard she is to be the crown prince's partner at the upcoming banquet. The rumors have already spread. They need to help manage the situation from now on. After some time, Rosetta thought isn't it fortunate that all she has to do is lie down quietly. Melanie told her she probably hasn't eaten yet. Until tomorrow morning, she can only eat a piece of bread for each meal. Understood, Rosetta tried to ask why. Melanie told her not to speak. The morning of the ball finally arrived, Rosetta thought this is the first time she has seen His Highness since his last episode. Just thinking about it makes her nervous. No, if he confesses, she will calmly reject him, so there is no need to worry. Prince arrived. Rosetta thought why is he not saying anything? Prince stated it's too much, she looks too beautiful. 
After that, in the carriage, Rosetta asked, aren't he feeling hot? His clothes seem too warm for summer. Prince asked if that's all she has to say. He wanted to look good for someone special, so he put effort into dressing up, so please appreciate it. Rosetta replied he looks splendid. Prince said by the time they arrive at the banquet, most of the nobles would have already. Their attention will be focused on her, and if anyone makes her uncomfortable, don't hesitate to tell him. Rosetta asked what will happen if she does. Prince replied well, what does she think he'll do? Just stay by his side. After some time, Prince spoke, let's go Rosetta. Then they entered the banquet hall. Nobles were mumbling about the crown prince bringing a partner, Mayfield. Which family is that? They heard she is a maid. Valerian came and thought Rosetta looked absolutely stunning today. Nobles were chatting, so Valerian was on the crown prince's side. After that, the prince stated it's been a while. Father, the emperor replied, yes, it's been a while. The empress stated it's the first time their son has brought a woman with him. Is he not curious about what kind of girl she is? Rosetta introduced herself saying she greets His Majesty the Emperor and the Empress of the Empire. She is Rosetta Mayfield from the Mayfield Barony. Rosetta thought she knew this would happen, so she made sure to learn proper etiquette. The Empress stated now that she thinks about it. How has her time been working? Valerian came and said at Armin's palace, then introduced himself. Her Majesty was speaking. He apologized for interrupting. The Empress replied, No, that's okay. The emperor asked it's been a while, what brings him to the banquet? Valerian replied yes, the relationship between him and the crown prince has become special recently, so he could not decline his invitation. Rosetta thought the nobles, and even the imperial family saw the relationship between Valerian and his majesty. This will further solidify his majesty's position. His position as the crown prince is now stronger. But participating as his partner rather than his bodyguard feels like facing death, her mouth is cramping. Then Duke Luniella came and asked, His Majesty if it's not too rude he would like to have a conversation in private. Rosetta thought is it about the marriage proposal, she needs to get out of there quickly. She said to His Highness she will be resting for a moment while eating dessert, she is feeling quite hungry. Prince asked if she would be okay, Rosetta replied, of course, after that. Rosetta thought is he really going to confess, if by any chance he refused Duke Luniella's proposal? Won't Lady Luniella be disappointed, then she would feel guilty. Next moment, Ashley came, the noble who slapped Rosetta in the clothes shop, she said, is this her first time trying such a fancy dessert? Rosetta replied, who is this, is she not Lady Bubbles, the low life? Ashley asked how she can say something so uncultured. Rosetta stated she is just repeating the words of her, seeing her face after a long time brought back those memories, and it just slipped out, she should live to take more etiquette classes. Then Ashley stated it seems like she is not familiar with high society, she could introduce her to a better boutique if she likes. Rosetta replied, do she really think this dress isn't good, since she entered the banquet hall today, everyone has been staring at her so much that it's embarrassing. But if that's what you think, please do share the name of the boutique she recommend, Ashley thought, what? She hates to admit it, this dress is actually pretty nice, she is getting tired of Latrance's dresses, she said, who cares about that dress, nobles around her stated everyone is curious about it. Ashley thought the atmosphere changed, what is it, this has never happened before. Then she drank some wine while thinking she would get her drunk and teach her a lesson. Then suddenly the drink came out from her mouth. Other ladies were shouting, What the hell is this? Their dresses. This is worth a fortune. What is she doing? Ashley stated. What is this? Why is this wine so sour? Melanie spoke. She will get it cleaned up for her, Rosetta thought. What is Melanie doing here? Could she have put vinegar in the wine to try and protect her? Ashley shouted. What did she do to the wine? How dare she? Rosetta stated she thinks the lady is just not used to drinking expensive wine. Ashley thought, how can a woman be so strong? Rosetta told her to be careful. Lady, she is going to get herself into trouble if she keeps being so clumsy. Luniella came and stated, please stop this nonsense. How dare she cause a scene in the ballroom? 
is she crazy? And to insult the prince's partner, he doesn't think the lady cares about how this will reflect on her in society. Then she introduced herself to Rosetta and asked if they could talk for a bit on the terrace. In the next scene, Luniella spoke. She knows that Rosetta is not the prince's mistress. Because the prince is not the kind of man who would have a mistress, Rosetta replied, Yes, of course she is not his mistress, she is not the prince's lover, she is here because there was no one else to be his partner. Luniella stated she knew he would rather come alone than be with someone he doesn't know, just relax, she is not really interested in the crown prince. Rosetta thought, what, Luniella spoke, she is not curious about the crown prince, but about her. Just by seeing how she took down Lady Ashley a moment ago, she must have something special about her. They seem to have a lot to talk about, but let's save it for next time. There are other guests waiting for her, so she should probably leave. Rosetta thought, when did His Highness come? But just now did Lady Luniella arrange for her to meet with His Highness? The prince stated he has something to tell her. Prince asked if she had a lot to drink. She smells like alcohol, but she's not drunk. Is she? Rosetta replied she can't get drunk just by drinking this, she is fine. Prince stated that's good, he can't say this to someone who is drunk. He knows that his position isn't secure yet, he loves her, to the point where he can't control his emotions, Rosetta thought why, even though she expected it, she can't believe it at all. Why is her heart beating so fast in front of his majesty? Why can't she push away the lips that draw nearer and keep repeating her determination to refuse? Prince continued. He loves her a lot. Rosetta asked why does he like her? Prince replied there are too many reasons. He likes her blue eyes that stare straight at him. Her cheeks that often turn pink. Her lips that smile brightly. They are all beautiful. The way she is a bit shy. The strong heart that seems fragile. Just everything that makes her up is so touching and lovely. How could he not love her? She makes him finally live. Rosetta replied he says that, so how could she possibly push him away? She also loves him, his majesty. Prince asked Rosetta, please allow him to date her, and he brought a necklace to match hers. He felt bad that hers was less shiny. Rosetta replied thanks. Prince asked if he can kiss her. Rosetta replied yes. Then they start kissing. After that, Prince thought he wants to hug her right now but he can't do it here. He doesn't want Rosetta to hate him. Rosetta asked if they should go back to their room. Oh, she just meant that it would be okay to go back soon. She didn't mean it in any other way. The next scene at the palace, Rosetta said should they have another drink. After some time, Rosetta thought, look at her, she is crazy. It's so different from the kiss they shared on the terrace. She didn't know the prince had this side to him. Prince said stop. He was not planning on doing something like this right after he confessed. Besides, he is also drunk. Rosetta replied she wants him to be. Prince said he will ask one last thing. Will she regret it? Rosetta replied no. Rosetta thought it was crazy. Prince asked if she was feeling well. Rosetta replied that his majesty was awake. Prince stated, his majesty. But yesterday she was calling him by his name. Rosetta said she thought she should go to work now. Her vacation was over. Prince asked if she couldn't go back to working as a maid, but at that time, Rosetta was already gone. After some time, Rosetta thought if she drank alcohol again, she would become a dog. Having a relationship as an escort could disqualify her as a knight. If His Majesty dies again in this life and time turns back, they would both just be escort knights. Will she be able to bear it? Then, all day, Rosetta was running away from Prince. She thought he was more persistent than she expected. Melanie came and asked where she was going. Rosetta replied she was going to work, then thought there could be some complicated circumstances. Rosetta said, Anyway, thanks for helping her yesterday. Melanie replied, No, she is the one who should thank her. She helped her a lot, so she prepared a gift for her. It's something for adults, so put it away quickly. Rosetta asked why she was giving her something like this. Melanie replied she could tell from the look on her face that she had a very good time last night. Rosetta thought, were they visible all this time? Melanie said, anyway, congratulations, she will have to go back to work. Then, at night, Rosetta thought today was also a tough day. Prince was at her room, 
saying it felt like he hadn't seen her in a long time. Rosetta thought it was too late, then asked his majesty what brought him here. Prince replied he came to see his lover's face, so, was running away from him as soon as she saw him just a coincidence. She said she wanted him, but she is running away now, Rosetta replied. Well, that's because she wanted to ensure his majesty's safety, Prince said. Then stopped talking and opened her mouth, then they started kissing. Rosetta said, wait a minute, this isn't what she wants. Then suddenly Melanie's gift came from her pocket, Rosetta thought, she completely forgot about this. Prince said, she doesn't just want a kiss, this is what she wants, she wants it, and he will be happy to do it for her. Then, in the morning, Rosetta thought she could not sleep well again this time. Then she told him she had an appointment with a friend, Prince asked if it couldn't be the man she talked about last time. Rosetta thought she wanted to be honest with him, but given his recent behavior, his majesty seemed to be very jealous, so it's better to keep it secret, Rosetta told him no, the friend she is meeting tomorrow is Melanie. Prince said okay, tomorrow they can eat something delicious or watch an opera or a play, Rosetta spoke like all other lovers. In the next scene, Valerian asked what happened between her and the crown prince. Valerian thought since Rosetta promised not to date Prince a few days ago, and because he trusts his sister, he decided to believe the rumors. However, he was filled with anger when he saw Rosetta hiding her neck awkwardly and avoiding eye contact with him, as if she had committed a crime. Rosetta replied that this is the crown prince, and she decided to officially date him. Valerian was shocked, then asked if the crown prince forced her to do this. Rosetta replied no. She also likes the crown prince, so they decided to date. Valerian thought Rosetta is like a sister to him, so he thought he was just uncomfortable. But why does his body reject it so much? Then he said she has a man she likes now. Congratulations. Then he thought, yes, this is jealousy. He can barely contain his energy now. If he finally realized all the time he thought he wanted Rosetta to be happy, because she is his family, but that wasn't true. Anyway, it would be a waste to give his rose to that man. The next scene, Rosetta thought even though Prince was excited to go on a date, the crown prince has more work to do these days. Suddenly, Prince came and gave her a bouquet, Rosetta spoke. So, this bouquet of flowers, Prince stated because she was born on a day when roses were in full bloom, Rosetta thought he remembered that. Then she said he is very beautiful today, she really mean it and that even when other things happened, it was okay because his majesty was by her side. After some time, Rosetta thought, did he rent the whole place, why is he doing such things when he didn't care about luxury before? Prince thought this date must be successful. Only then will Rosetta tell him she loves him, he knows it's a bit early, but he wants to propose to Rosetta soon. The next moment, Valerian came and stated he came because he needs to talk to him urgently, he has a lot to tell him, but he can't say it in the palace, Prince said it's that urgent that he interrupts their date. Rosetta spoke, she is fine since they are here, they can have dinner together, Valerian replied. Thanks, Lady Rosetta, Prince thought when did the two of them become familiar with each other's names. Moreover, the archmage is a handsome young man with blonde hair and blue eyes, which is Rosetta's favorite type, but if he shows his jealousy, Rosetta might get bored with him, Prince asked what is the urgent matter. Valerian replied he has confirmed that the First Plains entourage purchased the poison, Prince was shocked, and so was Rosetta. It's a colorless and odorless neurotoxin, when ingested, the poison causes sudden excitement and leads to death within five minutes, Rosetta thought, isn't this the first time she has heard of this poison? It seems the first prince has become anxious about his majesty's rapid rise to the throne. In that case, she must attend the hunting trip. Valerian continued, however, there is no need to worry too much, because the poison can be detected using the teaspoon he gave him. Rosetta thought, doesn't that mean that this matter isn't very serious, then the food is served, Valerian said, lady, don't eat the mushrooms, prince asked how did he know that, Valerian replied, they talked about the mushroom salad that was served at the banquet. Prince thought, isn't this a deliberate provocation from him? Rosetta said she is full. 
Shall they go to the theater now? Valerian spoke. He also wants to go back to the palace. But why is she still calling him his majesty? This is weird. Rosetta thought. Why is he doing this? Prince stated. Let's go. Then at the theater, Rosetta thought. These seats are comfortable and excellent, and the play is wonderful and enjoyable. She can't concentrate because his majesty looks sad. Prince stated. She knows. He is a very jealous person. Therefore, it is better for her not to talk about anyone else in front of him. Then Prince kissed her, Rosetta thought. To be honest, he is acting like a pervert with her, but it's not a bad feeling. Prince stated he wants to tear her clothes off right now, but he can't do anything. He is controlling himself, Rosetta thought. Why is he controlling himself? Then in the carriage, Prince said, she knows this carriage is very well soundproofed. Can he touch her? Rosetta said she has one condition, to take her with him on the next hunting trip. Prince replied, not possible. Rosetta stated, if he is worried about the danger, he knows she is strong. Prince replied, no, of course not, Rosetta said. Well, she won't kiss him anymore. Prince was shocked, then thought, what is this sudden talk? And asked, she can't do that at all. Rosetta shouted, don't touch. She won't do anything until he takes her with him on the hunting trip. Prince thought, even this look of hers seems cute, he is really weak, it will feel better soon. His feeling of dread turned into reality, from that day on, Rosetta never wanted to meet him, and she didn't let him kiss her. Then Prince made his decision, he agreed to Rosetta's request, or rather, he decided to seduce her so that she would break her promise and kiss him. The reason why Prince insisted that she not go with him on the hunting trip, even though she refused to kiss him, was that every time he returned from a hunting trip, a fatal accident would happen to him, so he didn't feel sorry. After some time, Prince told her he remembered all the memories, when she played with him using the vacuum cleaner like a toy, she seemed to have handled cats before. Rosetta was embarrassed and asked if he remembered that. Prince stated it's okay. He was so excited that he felt crazy even when she was not around. He will get over all of that. Instead, what if he seduced her? Then in the morning, Rosetta thought, in this way, if he didn't have this face, she would give up on getting his permission. In the next scene, Rosetta stated, help her. Valerian replied, don't she think it's rude? Actually, he knew she would come sooner or later, since she didn't get in. He thought she didn't care about him at all unless she needed him. Rosetta replied, she's sorry. Valerian replied, it's okay. What does she want him to help her with? Rosetta replied, help her sneak into the hunting trip. To secretly follow and protect his highness, Valerian asked, is it really necessary to take such a huge risk? Rosetta replied, she doesn't know, she just has a bad feeling. Please help her, he knows she can't do it without him. Valerian stated, she is really persuasive. With that pretty face of hers, how can he refuse? After that, Rosetta checked the horse his majesty would use, and the weapons he would use too. She also made sure that all the food his highness would eat was safe. And of course, in her last life, Prince died because of a poison needle stuck in his clothes, Prince asked. He is unusually protective today, shall they do one more thing before they leave? Rosetta shouted, stop it already, he will kill her with that. Prince asked, by the way, does she have anything for him? Rosetta thought, before the hunting festival begins, there is a tradition where women give a gift to their partner. She completely forgot about it because she was only focused on protecting him. Rosetta replied, she is sorry, she forgot about it. Prince replied, it's all right, it's her first time, it's a joke, so don't take it too seriously. Then Prince said, if there is someone who dares to give her a hard time, just tell him their name, he will definitely make that idiot's life miserable. Rosetta thought, after completing the hunt safely, let's watch the fireworks with Prince, she hopes everything goes smoothly. The hunting festival was attended by the longest serving steward, the escort knight, the priest, and her as his majesty's partner. In the carriage, Rosetta thought, although the hunting grounds were confirmed safe, she still can't shake off this feeling of unease. Then at the hunting festival, nobles were chatting about what's with this plain dress, Rosetta thought. Is this the best they could come up with to ridicule her? Of course, she didn't deliberately create a target for them to mock. 
It's just easier to move fast in this dress. It's all to protect his highness. She will keep an eye out for a while. And then she plans to excuse herself by pretending to feel unwell midway through. The next moment, Lunyela stated, Congratulations, she heard things are going well between her and his highness. Then Prince stated the hunting match will start soon, so he will take his leave first. After that, the priest came, and Lunyela and the priest started chatting. Rosetta thought this is the time, let's get out of here. After some time, she thought first to change into comfortable clothes and disguise herself, then went to the forest. Valerian was waiting for her, then she entered the magic circle. Now all she had to do was to find his majesty. After covering some distance, she was shocked, and thought she clearly checked everything down to the last detail, so why did a demon appear? The horse was completely out of control, even if it was surprised by the demon, it's strange. Could it be? Did Malcolm administer some sort of stimulant? The demon was out of control, the big stone came from demon, and hit him, the knight asked if he was alright. Malcolm stated this is not what he was promised, Rosetta thought right now, she needed to save his majesty first, on the other hand, Valerian thought he felt an ominous aura, he felt a threat to the prince's safety, he would quickly cast a protective spell. The empress stated it is against the law to interfere with the hunting festival, Valerian replied it seems like his royal highness is in danger, suddenly, the emperor fell on the ground. Valerian thought the emperor suddenly fell ill at the same time, that snake-like woman. He would cast a minimum amount of spells, he hoped her plan succeeds. Rosetta shouted, Armand, then thought he is still alive, Valerian must have cast the protective spell. Suddenly, assassins came, Rosetta said, come at her. Then they attack at her, Rosetta was also starting to take at them, they thought this woman, she is not ordinary, one of them ought to be careful. She is a swordswoman. How is such a young woman could do this? They can't win against her. This wasn't a part of the plan. One by one, she killed all of them. Rosetta stated they dare to try to kill her. They will pay the price for that. It's been a while since she has been hurt like this. This kind of wound will take time to heal. The next moment Valerian came, Rosetta asked if he could look for her necklace on his way back. It's the one his majesty gave her. Valerian saw her wound and asked to heal her. Rosetta replied it's nothing. Valerian thought does getting hurt and sacrificing herself for that idiot mean nothing to her? How good is that idiot? After getting hurt, all she thinks about is that necklace. Valerian said he will heal her with a magic spell. She asked but are they too close? If his majesty sees them, Valerian replied then he can pretend to be terminally ill again. The next moment, Prince woke up and was shocked. Rosetta thought no, this is a situation that anyone would misunderstand, she should be waiting quietly at evening, but she is wearing such suspicious clothes, then she pushed him away and said, his majesty, he can explain everything. Prince asked why is she with the archmage, and what on earth did he mean by pretending to be terminally ill, then the priest and knight came, Prince asked the priest, was it him who detoxified Rosetta? The priest replied if he is referring to the sitar poison, no, it wasn't him, prince asked then did another priest cure her? The priest replied no because the other priest was worried about the grand priest's reaction, but this is a miracle, deadly poison healed naturally, prince stated she lied to him. Like this video. Hit the like button and subscribe for more videos.